What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and this is The Punisher Season 2, Episode 7, One Bad Day. So as with the other reviews that I've done here at my friend's place that I'm house-sitting, um, they've got the cat, so if there are any weird cuts, that's what happened. The cat probably got in the way. Um, and also something I've noticed over the past couple nights, because that's generally what I've been about to do a review, is sometime around the nighttime because they're doing construction like right upstairs during the day. Uh, but now, now the people upstairs sound like they're dropping two by fours throughout the night. Just randomly, I hear I'll hear some loud like clanging sound, like something just fell hard. Um, and also, I don't know if it's the dog that's upstairs or just the dog somewhere else. But I've been hearing a dog barking a lot too. So I'm just warning you: you might hear a lot of random noises, and I apologize for that. But it's kind of out of my control. So. That being said, yeah, right back into The Punisher, and it, it feels like we're finally getting to the peak of the clash between Frank and Billy, which I'll admit, still not really, I don't know, just because they gave us so much with the Schultzes and their whole family and all of that, I was kind of ready to start getting more into that. I mean, the girl, Amy, doesn't even show up in this episode. So she's just kind of been pushed to the side. That whole story has been pushed to the side. And we're really just focused on Billy. And that's it. Um, and I don't know. It just, again, it feels like the pacing has been a little weird because we're like building up steam with one story and then all of a sudden stop, focus on the other story and build up steam with that story and stop. So I kind of wonder if next episode we're going to start and all of a sudden we're going to be fo focusing on the Schultz's story again. <laughs> Just because it feels like we're finally building up momentum on the Billy story. And I, I'm worried that they're just going to cut that one off now and be like, alright, now back to the other story. It just feels like it's too much, you know, and... I've seen it handled much better in other shows is the problem. You know, where you have two different villains that you're going up against. And you have to deal with both stories. I mean, it's hard to tackle. But I've seen shows do it well, where... They spend a good amount of time with both, and it doesn't feel like one is interrupting the other, or you're not focusing on one because you'd rather focus on the other. It's been handled well previously, where they build up both of the stories, and then it all comes to a head at one climactic scene, instead of what's happening in this show right now, which is unfortunately, nothing really ever builds up too much steam. Anytime it starts to get going, it'll stop. And now it kind of feels like, how these stories are going to wrap up, it's not going to be they're all going to come together for one big climactic moment. It's going to be we're going to get to the end of one story before we can really focus on getting to the end of the other. And I just don't really like that type of writing. You know, it's, it, it might work for some people. Some people might be like, oh, it's so cool how they, you know, had to focus on so many different things and they stopped one to go talk about the other and then they had to finish up one story before finishing up the other. For me, it just feels kind of sloppy and choppy and... All around moppy. I don't know. I just... It's not a good time to rhyme. Anyways. Um, but no, all the stuff with Billy in this episode, though, was enjoyable. I enjoyed getting to see, you know, kind of him going further down this dark path. And again, turning more into first season Billy, but with a little hint of something psychotic underneath. Because we didn't really get to see that part of Billy except for near the end of the season, last season. So now getting to see it more here, it's enjoyable. And he's, again, a very good actor. So he really pulls off this performance. Um, uh, what's her name? Cumont, the girl that was also Maggie. Or no, Dumont, I think. She's still the worst. Um, yeah, so she's totally into Billy. That's probably why she let him go to begin with, because she had feelings for him. She's also crazy because she had pain or something. And I don't know. Her whole story has been stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, maybe it's because there's that little bit of like, oh, this is Maggie from Supergirl and I don't like her that show. But I don't know. I just, what's been her point? Her point was Billy needed a way to get out of the hospital without getting arrested. And... It's almost like they didn't want to make it seem like it was too easy for him, so they gave him somebody that he connected with that allowed him to get out of the hospital. And that's fine, but make her have a bigger part in the story, because what she is, she's just become now a piece for Billy, you know? And that's kind of it. 
And her story's not that interesting either. She's just kind of a, a therapist who's also a little bit crazy, but she's not like a psychopath or anything. She just, I don't know, she enjoys pain. It looks like she's cut herself a lot before maybe, or she's dealt with pain. I, I, I honestly don't know. Like, she's such a non-interesting character that I don't really care to know what's going on with her because they haven't written her very well. So, yeah, I don't know. I just... I feel like there are much better ways. Like, again, you could have tied it in with this other story with the Schultz family that would have been more interesting. Yeah, that would have got me more intrigued. But just giving us this woman who's a therapist for Billy who falls in love with them and wants to sleep with them, and that's why he gets out of the hospital and she doesn't really have a good reason other than she's just a tiny bit crazy, it's not that interesting to me. So her story has definitely been the weakest part of the season, and I don't know if this is the last we're going to see of her because Billy kind of leaves her behind, but I don't know. If, if it is the last we see of her, good riddance. <laughs> but if not, I'm just not excited to see her back in the show. I'm not excited to see her come back, especially with how, again... Kind of, kind of like I said in the last review, what she was talking to Madani and she was giving her kind of that holier-than-thou speech, it really makes her look super hypocritical, and that makes me like her even less. So, yeah, that's that was frustrating, but um, thankfully that happened very early on in the episode, so the rest of it was all good, all enjoyable, exciting action, you know, seeing Frank figure out what to do, Madani kind of struggling with her morals, whether or not she wants to allow Frank to do this, but kind of realizing that it's a necessity. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of a, an interesting topic for this show because, I mean, the main character is an anti-hero. He doesn't care about killing somebody. You know, for Daredevil, that's something that is heavily discussed, and you kind of know where it's going to end. Like, if he kills somebody, that's kind of going against what he stands for. So you don't... You don't see him killing anybody. Even, like, letting somebody die. It's kind of like Batman, you know? Like, sure, he let Rachel Gould die and Batman begins. But, you know, Dark Knight, Joker could fall to his death. He could let him, but he doesn't. Because it kind of goes against his morals. It goes against what he does. For Punisher, he doesn't have that moral dilemma. He knows who he is. He knows he's a killer. He knows that this is what he does well. And there's not really a struggle internally for him to fight against that. So it's weird that they're kind of bringing that up. And I don't know if they're going to start pushing that moral dilemma a little bit more for him. Trying to change who he is as a person. I just don't see it happening. You know, again, because Punisher is such a good anti-hero. You don't want to see him necessarily become a good guy. And, oh, he's likable and he's not killing any more guys. Because that's not the Punisher character. So... I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do with that, but it kind of makes Madani... It puts her in a, a tough predicament, and I feel like that's kind of what's interesting about her character right now is the fact that she does want him to go through with this, but she doesn't want to admit to herself that she wants him to go through with it because then it makes her seem like she might be a bad person for some wanting somebody else to die, despite the fact that, I mean, what she went through, it would be understandable if she felt that way. <laughs> So, I don't know. I don't know what to expect from that whole story, and it kind of feels like maybe it's pointless, but maybe it will have a point. I don't know. Um, yeah. It's kind of something that's there, and something that probably should be talked about, but I don't know if they're going to give it that much more time. But who knows? We'll see. Uh, but yeah, so that's it for this episode. On to episode 8. See you there in a sec. And now episode 8, My Brother's Keeper. Going to get the worst part out of the way, Dumont, still. <laughs> no surprise. Um, yeah, none of her scenes make any sense to me. And maybe I'm alone in that. Maybe everybody is watching her character and just so driven by her and her motivations. And oh my gosh, she loves him. And aww. I Get on with it. Every scene spent with her, I feel like is a scene wasted. Oh my god. Like, so, you know, Billy goes to see her, and she closes the door. I'm like, yeah, that's what you should do, but you're not going to, are you? You're going to change your heart. And sure enough, she unlocks it and lets him in. And then, like, she gives him this speech about how it's great that he knows that Frank is trying to kill him, that Frank is the one that betrayed him, even though 
he doesn't realize why Frank is trying to kill him because he doesn't know that part. But then she's like, see, now you have answers instead of questions. No, he doesn't. He's still questioning why Frank is trying to kill him. So you're wrong. <laughs> and then she's like telling him how great it is that he knows this, how he's going to be a better person. And she just, she sounds nuts. She sounds crazy. She's talking to a guy who's a murderer. She's treating Frank like he's the bad guy. Does she not know that Billy killed Frank's family? Because I thought that was something that was kind of common knowledge. That he's the one that killed Frank Castle's family. I thought that was common knowledge. If that's not and she doesn't know that, then my bad. But she's just like, no, Frank's, he's the one that betrayed you. You don't know that. And you're just feeding his, his, his craziness, his psych, psychopathy? Psycho, I, I don't know. I don't know the word. I'm frustrated and I'm tired. But you're just feeding into that. As a therapist, you think you would know better. But she's just feeding that. She's treating him like, yes, give in to your rage. Give in to your anger. Like, what is she, a Sith Lord? <laughs> what the? Oh my god. And then he goes crazy. Because she fed into that, and now he doesn't trust her anymore, because if he can't trust Frank, he can't trust anybody. He starts breaking her place apart, and he throws her up against the window, and is like, here, how does it feel when somebody tries to make you feel something you don't want to feel? It sucks, doesn't it? And then she just turns around, and goes, oh, but I love you, and you could be a better person. This isn't a lesser version of yourself. This is a better version of yourself. And just talks him down somehow. I'm just like, okay, how the... F She's a terrible therapist. We know she's a terrible therapist. It's been shown several times throughout the season. She's a terrible therapist. So how is it that she somehow can continue to talk him down whenever he's about to kill her? Because <laughs> I'm just like, I want him to kill her at this point. I'm done with her character. She needs to be gone. Out of the show. She's the worst. Oh, what was the other line? There was just... Uh, there was another line. I had to pause it and just take a second because I'm like, oh, the... He's like, why did you let me in? She's like, I hate beginnings. The awkward start, but we started in the middle, and I like that about us. What does that mean? What do you mean you started in the middle? What? What? I, what? Oh my god. <laughs> that line was so dumb. And I know that's that's the writer's fault. I know that's not... The character's fault. I, I, mean, I really should be blaming the writers for writing her into this show. But, oh my god. Why does this actress have to pick parts that I just absolutely despise? <sighs> so yeah. Dumont's the worst. Everything else, I enjoyed it. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's really... I cannot believe that something like her character can piss me off so much. And then the rest of the episode, I'm just... I'm on edge, I'm on the edge of my seat, I'm invested, I want to know what's going to happen next, because it's got me hooked. I want to see what's going to happen in this story, and I, again, I talked about it, this whole starting up one story and then cutting it off and going with another one, I was really worried they were going to do that again, but they've kept this one going, and now I'm fully invested, and I'm ready to see the end of it, I'm ready to see how it plays out, because oh my gosh, they've built up the intensity so much, it's so good. I mean, you've got Billy, what he's going through, and again, as much as I hate Dumont, Billy's sides of those scenes with her throughout the entire season have been phenomenal. I mean, my God, the guy can act. And again, he showed it in this performance. He showed it again. And just all of his scenes are so gripping, and you feel sorry for him, even though you know he's a terrible person, but he doesn't know why he's a terrible person. He doesn't understand because he can't remember. And that is, it's a compelling story. Oh, and then Frank is, he's going down this dark path, darker than usual, to the point where, you know, as Curtis pointed out, he's becoming very much like Billy. And I kind of wondered, you know, because Madani was kind of throwing in her little moral objection about, like, not wanting to kill Billy, and, you know, that just makes us the same as them. And I didn't really understand where that was going, but then this episode, whenever he starts beating the crap out of Jake and Curtis stops him, that's when it hits me. They're doing this to kind of show that where Frank is going, yes, he's an anti-hero. Yes, he's willing to kill people. And that's something that's unique to him, you know. 
he is somebody that's not afraid to, to shoot somebody. You know, he's not afraid to take a life. But there's still a difference between him and Billy. Billy is a psychopath. Billy is crazy. Billy is willing to take innocent lives in the pursuit of what he wants. Frank isn't one to take innocent lives. He's not one to say, oh, you're unarmed? Oh, well. Oh, I need to kill this innocent person to get what I want? Oh, well. He's not that type of person. And he's kind of becoming that because Jake, yeah, he got caught up with Billy, but it's not really his fault. It's not like he went in thinking like, oh, I want to work with this crazy Billy guy because he's going to give me all the money I want. He, I mean, Frank was even telling him in the last episode, like, yeah, you, you're you part of this band of brothers. You don't want to sell them out. Like, I get that. I was there. So he can he understands that, but in this episode it didn't matter to him because he missed his shot and it drove him crazy. It drove him to the point where he was willing to take this innocent guy's life just because he was pissed at himself for missing the shot to take out Billy. And it's really compelling and seeing him at the end with at the graves with his family, I mean, yeah. I, I'm hoping he kind of comes back, back towards, I guess... The lighter side, because <laughs> it's not really the light side. It's not like he's going to become a hero now or anything. But, I mean, even, you know, the scene where he threatened Amy. If, when she was sitting there in the, the camp or whatever, and she was just there for a few... It was like, I don't know, it was like a couple minutes where we were just with her and she was doing nothing. She was just in there. And, like, okay, I guess that's just showing that she's bored. But then all of a sudden, the next scene with her is Frank coming in, and she decides, oh, I'm just going to try to, you know... Show off that I've been learning his technique. I'm going to disarm him. And he flips out on her because of where he is right now. And it was just such an intense scene. Like, out of nowhere. You know, especially involving her. Because, again, her past scenes were so lighthearted and just kind of goofy. And, oh, she's just goofing around in the camper all by herself. And all of a sudden, Frank gets there. It, it gets real. So, yeah, it's just all of this story is very very compelling and it's got me invested it makes me want to see where it's going to end i just hope that the scenes with dumont become lesser and lesser as the season goes on um because she's she's the only downside of this show right now everything else is being handled perfectly right now again the, the stop starting with some of these stories is a little jarring at times as long as they don't do it again before the end of the season i'll be perfectly happy with it but yeah, if Dumont can get killed or written out of the show in the next couple episodes, it won't matter to me at all. Um, I think that's about it. You know, you got Mahoney trying to talk Madani kind of out of the situation, trying to get her to stop. Madani, of course, you know, is trying to see this through. She still wants to get her revenge on Billy, but also doesn't really know how she feels about Frank at the moment. Um, yeah, it's just a couple moving pieces here and there that is keeping things a little bit more complex with the storytelling, and I like that. I like it whenever it's not straightforward and so simple. Um, so, yeah, all in all, good episode. I don't know if we're going to see how this story ends in the next couple episodes or if they're going to take another break to go focus back on Pilgrim and his family and all that, but, yeah, it's going to be uh, hopefully exciting. So on to the final of these three episodes. See you there in a sec. Now episode nine... <laughs> Fluster cluck. That a way to get around, I guess, I don't know, are they allowed to drop the F-bomb on Netflix shows? I, I thought they were. So it seems a little weird that they're avoiding... I would assume they could say it one time out of an entire season, I would think. So this could be the time to, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Anyways. Um, no, but I mean, really is a, a cluster. Just everything going on, so much happening. Um... Again, we'll talk about the worst part first, Dumont. And, uh, yeah, I mean, just... Did we really need to now turn her into the jealous girlfriend story? <laughs> because, you know, Billy goes and sees Madani, and then she's all like, you went and saw her without telling me? And then she calls Madani to her office to talk about it, and I'm just, oh my god. I just hope there's something more to this story. I, I keep hoping and praying that... She's not just this one stupid character. Oh my gosh. So yeah, um, still not a fan. And 
that's pretty much where it leaves off is she talks to Madani a little bit. Madani tells her what happened, and I guess they're just going to discuss what happened, maybe, or maybe she's going to use Madani somehow to find out about Frank or where Frank is so she can help Billy, but it didn't seem like she really wanted Billy to find out where Frank was. Like, it seems like she wants Billy to leave it all behind. I'm in the middle of you. Hush your mouth. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know what to expect from her story, and frankly, I don't really care. You know, again, I just wish they'd write her off because she's annoying and stupid and the worst character on the show. Oh, okay. So, moving past that, though, um, honestly, a lot of this episode was just very well done because it really did feel like, I mean, it was all moving naturally, but still interestingly. You know, and even Amy, who I've had my issues with her before trying to do things that she shouldn't be doing, I mean, it really does feel like she's kind of at that point where, yeah, I totally understand why she was willing to put her life at risk because she's been doing nothing. She's been stuck in the trailer. She's been not being involved in anything. Yeah, I understand her wanting to get out. And it just so happened that it happened to be at the right time when somebody puts out a $5 million bounty <laughs> on Frank and her. So, of course, the timing was terrible. And, you know, it just ends up... If she had gone to a friend and there wasn't a bounty on her, maybe her friend would have helped her out. Um, but because of the timing, it didn't work out that way. So... It just, it makes sense within the realms of the story. And it makes it to where Amy in that moment is not dislikable. You know, if she had tried to escape after like one day in the trailer, she was just like, God, I'm, I'm so done here. And then she tried to run away, tried to get out. Then that would be like, okay, you're stupid. You know, just give it some more time. It's been one day, but it's been more than a day. I would think it's been about maybe a couple weeks I don't really know exactly how much time has passed since they put her in the trailer, but she's been stuck there. She's not been allowed to go anywhere. So yeah, I understand. I totally get where she's coming from. And that the scene that followed was just so intense. Like, I, I knew she wasn't going to die, pretty sure. But just, I, I'm sitting there thinking like, oh my gosh, is she... Because, you know, you could see her looking at the gun... You can see the guy's holding it, not really looking at her, because he doesn't really suspect she's going to be able to do much. And, of course, you know they showed Frank teaching her how to disarm a guy, and then she does it, and not only that, she pulls the trigger. And that following scene was just so good. You know, Frank having to be a father for her for a second. You know, after coming in there and shooting out those guys like he normally does... Just being that father figure for a second, being like, no, 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 hey, I killed him. You know, shoots him, kills him, and then I, I'm, I'm the one that did it. You didn't kill him, you just shot him. And just, you know, gets her to calm down because he knows they got to get out of there. It's just so interesting and so, the, the acting again was so well done. All the actors are really nailing their parts this season. Even uh, Maggie's actor, whatever her name is, Floriana Lima, I think. I mean, she's doing a good part it's not like she's acting poorly. It's just her character is written to be so annoying. <laughs> it's so dumb. Um, but yeah, so it just everything to do with Frank and Amy in this one, really, really intriguing. And it kept me engaged. You know, It kept me, again, on the edge of my seat like I am the past few episodes. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed that side of things. Curtis, we see you know his story moving along, trying to get these veterans to help out. And yeah, I'm glad that he has a part in this as well. You know, he's not just sitting on the sidelines waiting for Frank to need him again. Um, Billy didn't have much happen with him in this one. You know, we see him go and talk to Madani, but that's kind of where his story for this episode ended. So it kind of felt like we again pushed Billy's story a little bit more to the backseat because Pilgrim comes back. And it's funny because I'm an idiot. <laughs> I don't know why I thought he was... The Schultz's son, I just, I assumed it, the guy was talking to him, um, Corbin Benson's character, I can't remember his name now, is it Andy? I want to say it's Andy Schultz. Um, he was talking to him like a son, so I kind of figured that's what was happening, and they had, like, groomed him to be more, I guess, receptive, I don't know, I just, I don't know why I got a father-son relationship between the two of them. But we come to find out, no, he's not the son. Maybe that was apparent to other people. It was not apparent to me. 
Yeah, cats. What can you do? Um, but yeah, so not a father-son relationship. It, I guess it kind of is. Like, he's he's a fatherly figure to him, but you know, I guess he's just sort of a hitman for, for the Schultzes in a way. Um, and so they're just trying to keep this whole thing about their son and wraps. We do get to meet the son in this one finally. And uh, you can see that the son doesn't really want this, supposedly. I don't know. It, it's hard to tell. I can't really tell if he doesn't want to be the president or if he's not really for the family, if he'd rather just, you know, be gay and that's it and just accept me for who I am or if he actually knows what they're doing and knows what they're trying to accomplish. Um, I don't know. It's, I haven't really seen enough from him to know what his motivations are and what he's thinking in all of this. But yeah, finding out more about Pilgrim though and just seeing he's back in New York. I think the other thing too is they were talking about, you know, the vices that he had and how New York would bring that back out of him. So I assumed, you know, when we found out about the son being gay, I assumed that's the vice they were talking about, but it's actually drinking. So um, we do see him, I guess, catching up with one of his old drinking buddies at the end of this one, uh, talking like he's going to beat him up, which uh, maybe he wasn't an expert hitman back when he was drinking with this guy. But if he was, then this guy threatening him is even funnier because <laughs> I'm just like, oh, yeah, dude, you're, you're definitely going to be able to take him. <laughs> you got him. I definitely do not expect you to die <laughs> by the end of this episode, and we don't even see what happens to him. So I'm assuming he kills him off screen. But, yeah, it's, it is interesting to see, I guess, a little bit more of Pilgrim's backstory and where he's coming from, um, which I... I don't know if they've actually mentioned his name because I know he's Pilgrim because of the subtitles you know saying that Pilgrim is speaking but yeah I don't know did they say his name earlier in the season I don't know I'm too lazy to go back and look and see if I just missed it but yeah anyways but we're getting a bit more backstory on him and I I like that because he's been a very mysterious character and honestly still don't really know fully everything I don't think like this Fiona woman is still kind of a mystery as well like we know she was having Amy and her group do these things and we know that she's going to blackmail but even then like there's still a few I guess how did they find out what exactly was the point who is this Fiona woman is she just a blackmailer is that kind of what she does and she just had she always has kids like kind of running for her and doing her bidding Type of thing. I don't know. I feel like there's still some answers there that either I've forgotten or they haven't really explained yet. So there may still be a couple mysteries here and there, but it kind of feels like that's where the mystery still lies. Is 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 in Pilgrim's story and who he is, and kind of why, I guess, who the Schultzes are in the community and all this. Because um, Billy's story, it kind of feels like it's on a straightaway train, just heading <laughs> to the end of the track, and we're gonna get there soon. Um, but I don't know, maybe it'll kind of be one of those things where Billy and Frank finally face off, but then Pilgrim steps in because he's got his job to do as well, and that it kind of all meets in the middle type of thing. I don't know. It's, it's got me intrigued, and that's what's important. You know, there are a couple things that are still a little messy right now, um, and then Dumont's story is still annoying, but... Overall, I mean, I'm still really loving the hell out of this show. I mean, it's it's so enjoyable. It's so well acted. The action is still fantastic. Yeah, I don't know what to say. I mean, this... It's a great show. It really is. I, I don't remember liking the first season this much. I remember the first season was enjoyable enough, but it was mainly enjoyable for the action. But man, something about the second season has got me really just hooked. And I want to see more, and I'm, I'm ready to see more. So, yeah, we'll see where it goes next. But that's it for these three episodes. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on these episodes? Let me know what we can talk about discuss all the good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for future Punisher reviews, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.